Hello, everybody. My name is Tommy Henniger, the Director of Adult Education at Kaskaskia College. Like all programs, we were forced with many obstacles during the COVID pandemic when all programs were shut down. Our first challenge was how to quickly transition all instruction virtually, and then second, how we could recoup some of the students lost and increase our enrollment at the same time. Our first step was to survey all of our current students on their ability to connect to the internet and which social media platforms they utilized and how often. Our survey results dispelled our assumptions that adult ed students do not use the internet on a daily basis. So after we transitioned to online instruction, Zach McGinn, our student coordinator, created, designed, and implemented an online ad campaign. I would now like to introduce Zach to walk you through our processes and show you our results. Zach, take it away. My name is Zach McGeehan. I am the District Coordinator of Adult Education at Kaskaskia College. To give you a little bit of background about myself, my bachelor's is in public relations, I used to teach PR classes, and my master's is in interpersonal communication. Considering our marketing campaign, uh, in the spring of 2019, as Tommy mentioned, we decided that an online marketing campaign was a viable option for our department. Uh, prior to that, we had always been told, or the rumor had always persisted, that students didn't have phones, they didn't have internet access, nor did they have laptops or desktops or any kind of device. So we pulled them and we determined that this was a viable option. Uh, we decided to go through a social media campaign specifically. So before we look at the specifics, I'd like to talk about the most general things first. So our overview, today we're going to talk about social media, specifically Facebook and why we chose that, the effectiveness, judging ourselves on how well we did, as well as other potential methods that we could use in the future or in coordination with Facebook. Before we go any further, I'd also like to look at the effective communication cycle. So maybe this is pulling from my interpersonal background, but communication we want is cyclic. You may think of one-way communication as being the norm for adult ed, where people uh, send a message to potential students. So say maybe it is an advertisement in the paper, and you never know if it was good or not. Was it effective? Was it the right message? How many people looked at it? So on and so forth. So for our example, we wanna look at us as a department being the senders, communicating a social media message to the receivers, potential students, and then also getting feedback along the way, whether those are phone calls or text messages for interest, or if that is likes, shares, or comments on the social media itself. Either way, we are looking at the cyclic communication cycle. That's what we're wanting. We're wanting to hear from students and we're wanting to get decent feedback from them. We did choose Facebook to use as it's the most common social media there is. So as a platform, it has over 2.6 billion users. And I also want you to be keenly aware there's a difference between profiles and pages. You probably have a Facebook profile. So that's where you're sharing your vacation photos, funny jokes, what happened to you, memes, and so on and so forth. But the page is what we're focusing on. So if you didn't know, the profile is what a person has, a page is what an organization should use. So we posted everything to our adult ed page and or the Kaskaskia College main college page. We're gonna talk about content here in one second, but effectively we posted content and then we paid per view. So we didn't rent a movie on pay-per-view we paid per view. So that happens when you sponsor an advertisement, when you boost a post, an image, or whatever it is, but we effectively gave Facebook money for them to push our content out. Once you do that, you'll also be able to get some insights, which are common pieces of data that you can use and see if your campaign was effective or if it wasn't effective. Before we go any further, 
One thing to know is after you've made your Facebook page, you need to know who am I trying to reach? What is my target public? So I want you to ask yourselves as a department, what is my Facebook page for? It can be for a variety of things. So you don't just have to pick one thing. You may be looking at, I need to inform the general public. So it could be informative. It could be a recruiting tool. It could be recruiting students. It could be recruiting instructors. Or is it something else? Is it a combination of things? Is it just showcasing my students? Is it showcasing my classes? Is it showcasing staff or success stories? Whatever it is, I would recommend that you pick what is my Facebook page for. You'll also want to use target publics in your campaigns. So you are choosing a target public, you are targeting a specific population. Over here on my little graph, a demographic segmentation breaks up these target publics into these categories, but it can be as broad or as narrow as you want. You can think about people being a certain age in your GD classes, perhaps a gender, socioeconomic status, education, whatever it is, I would highly recommend that you also pick a target public. So once you've created your Facebook page, you've determined who you're going to serve on that Facebook page, the next natural step is to create content to post. You've got a few different options here. The first and most common option is text only. So it could be a couple sentences, it could be an announcement, it could be a couple paragraphs. It is also, unfortunately, the most ineffective. Most students, most people, will continue right on past it. They're going to keep scrolling. There's nothing to catch their eye. The most effective things to post are pictures, informative pictures, and videos. But all of these should include text. And what I mean by that is, for our example here, we have a graduate spotlight post. You cannot search a picture on Facebook. So say I know I'm looking up something from Kaskaskia College and it has our student on a sales in it. I cannot just search for this picture. I have to have the font, the text, the copy over here with it. So you'll notice I highlight us KC, Kaskaskia College in several different places, as well as the student's name. So if someone looks up on a sales adult ed, this copy will show up and in turn, the picture as well. So that's how pictures with text are effective. Informative pictures, like the graphic below, join our GD waitlist, also must be paired with copy. The copy is what is searchable through Facebook search, so it will naturally let this picture show up. The same thing with a video. If you determine that you want to make a video, it's going to be the most effective, you put something together, you still need to title it properly, and you also need to add copy or text with it that highlights your program name, the contact information, and any other thing that you think is important. You can also post highlights, so it might be just program information with a picture, a graduate spotlight, so students, perhaps interviews with staff or faculty. You can spotlight things. Whatever it is, you can create the topic. You can produce content for it, but you should always produce text with it as well. Once we have our content, so preferably a picture with text, through Facebook, you can boost it. So this is our pay per view. Here, you can see we have a boost a post, get more messages, promote your page. We have options. On our end, we just boosted a post. We were not looking to make you know, people uh, website visitors. We weren't looking for messages through Facebook. We just wanted to inform overall the population of our district of what we offer. So for us, we boosted a post. From here, we determine how much we wanted to spend. So I've got two examples here. The left one is five days for $5. 
you'll see that the estimated people reached is 170 minimum to 500 people maximum per day. So that's pretty good for just $1 per day. If your budget is bigger, you might invest $100. You can choose the duration. For a 14 day duration for $100, I will reach 1,200 to 3,600 people. And you can see below that there's a breakdown of how much I'm spending per day. You can also do this much more condensed. Say I chose to do $100 for five days, I would reach more people because I'm putting more money into fewer days. If your event is time sensitive, it's important to time it just right so you can also schedule it for whenever you need it, for as long as you need it, for as much as you want to spend. Within post boosting, you also get to pick your detailed targeting audience as well as your area of influence. So over here on the left, you can see that we picked most of District 501. So I didn't want to uh, interfere into SWIC too much. I didn't want to interfere into Rin Lake too much. And I can pick this circle. So I can define that area. So we picked Centralia, our main campus's zip code, plus 25 miles, which encompasses a huge chunk of our area. We did leave it generally. So I did not pick any fine-tuned detailed targeting, but you can. I can pick different education levels, financial levels, life events that are common between the population, if they have parents, their relationship status, so if they're married or if they're single, as well as their work status. I can also go into their interest behaviors and other categories to specifically target their interests. After you've boosted a post, you can also take a look at Facebook Insights. So this is going to give you some really good data that they collect for you. If you have a Facebook page, you get this regardless. You do not have to boost a post to look in these insights. If you do boost a post, you'll see that there is a difference. One is organic and one is paid. For us, you can see that we have a decent amount of views and then we go into some lulls and then we post more content and it goes down, it goes up again with the next post and so on and so forth. This way, it's easy to track when people are viewing, when I should post more and other information such as that. It is effectively a metric that is informing us how we're doing and how we can do better. In addition to that data, we also get some more demographic information about the people that have liked my page. 310 people have liked my Facebook page for KC Adult Ed, and you may think that's not very many, but that's also not necessarily my goal. My goal is to post content and get it to go viral. I want people that do not interact with my page to see it. So I'm trying to get likes and shares, but most of those likes and shares don't even come from people that have liked my page. So it's not necessarily a good metric to judge success. Success should be driven by engagements and how many people are actively sharing and liking your content. So for, again, for us, we've got 310 likes. The breakdown of this by age and gender is shown here. So I can also get a feel for how many people fall into these specific categories. It also gives me a breakdown by city. The main campus for Kaskaskia College is in Centralia, so it makes most sense that that's where most of my fans come from. These other cities and towns are in our district, outside of Memphis. Memphis is my outlier. The reason being is Tommy, our adult ed director, is originally from Memphis. So his family, his friends there, also are a part of our page. So taking all of this into account, let's take a look at one example of copy as well as one picture example. So off to the left, this is the graphic that I created in Canva. 
It is the post that we boosted that was most successful this year. So you'll notice I included a graphic, which again, I made in Canva. It is a free website that has templates. Uh, there's many tutorials online to make custom stuff, but I used one of the templates. I did adapt it to our needs, but the first thing that you can see about it is free GED classes. That's my common theme. That's the main thing I want you to take away. So that's the main focal point. I did also include text or copy up there at the top of that post to make sure that people could always find stuff out about us in Facebook search. Over here to the right, you're going to see some additional copy. So almost every single one of my posts contains something like this. It talks about orientations. It talks about locations. It also talks about our phone number. Uh, you can call or text as well as our online registration form. So let's take a look at the results. This post was boosted for $400. Our target public was people 17 to 50 in a 40 mile radius around the main campus in Centralia. Our result was astounding. We got hundreds, if not a thousand, calls and texts. 290 people liked or reacted to that post. We ended up with 130 registrations, which procured us 98 new students for the adult ed program at Kaskaskia College. We were so successful that even Texas wanted in on this action because people from Texas had commented, they had shared it, they had liked it, and they called and wanted to register. We also got several people from Tennessee, from Missouri, and other surrounding states, because what we can't control about this post is it going viral. Typically, we probably think of something going viral now as negative, but in this case, it was a positive. We got 421 shares, but we cannot control that. We did boost the post so people would see it, but thankfully, people were also inclined to share it. So that's how we got our people from Texas or other states that were interested. Our best responses were from 18 to 44 year old females, but across the board, our engagement was very, very successful. So we got 1,983 post engagements, meaning 1,983 people clicked, over 29,000 people saw this post, and it was all for $400. I will warn you about one thing, spam. Most of our students do not want to be bothered. They do not want to be perpetually contacted. So I would always recommend that you kind of walk the line, as Johnny Cash would say. Too many messages in a too short amount of time is gonna get people to ignore you. So a case study in recent practice I follow one page that they post about every two to three hours. And eventually I got tired of that. I don't wanna see something every two to three hours, especially if it's similar to what I just saw two or three hours before that. So you need to remember your timing. Most of our students use social media. They're on Facebook quite often, but they don't wanna see us every day. So typically I post every few days. If I was trying to build perhaps a underlying viewership, I would post every day or every other day. But at the same time, again, I'm only wanting people to share. I'm only wanting people to comment and like. I'm not necessarily looking for people to like my page itself. I'm looking for things to go viral. And if I post too much, I don't have something viral. I have something that is like hickory smoked flavored spam.
So overall, there are a few different takeaways that I'd like to end with. I want you to make a Facebook page. But more importantly, I want you to use that Facebook page. If nothing else, you can create that Facebook page, put your hours of operation and a contact phone number, and then that's it. But it always makes sense to use that Facebook page to post content, to get things to go viral as much as possible. I also want you to know your target audience. Who am I trying to reach? Why am I trying to reach these specific people? Always use diverse message types. So text and pictures, text and videos, use different types of content. Am I highlighting a student? Am I highlighting my classes? Am I telling you about an upcoming event that I have? Whatever it is, always use diverse means to get those messages across. Also use mixed methods of reaching people, including multiple social medias. Find out what your students prefer. If they prefer Twitter, use Twitter. If they like Facebook, use Facebook. But always play to what is already there. If there's a foundation in Facebook with your student population, then it makes most sense to use that as a system. Also, always have one voice. So across all social media platforms, old school, new school, whatever content you're creating, it all should look alike. The messages should at least be similar. When you see something from Adult Ed KC, I want you to think Adult Ed KC. I don't want you to think of some other location, a different college, a different program within KC. I want you to think Adult Ed at KC. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, you can always give us a call or a text at 618-545-3115. Thank you.